Hey everybody, it's your girl Bunny. Hulu's original series, Wu-Tang, an American Saga, season one, episode three, all in together now. That's all coming up next. We cut to the first scene where we see Jason. He's already been shot. He's laying on the ground. He is breathing slower. His heartbeat is slowing down. And we see a visualization of a video game of it allowing him to have one up, one more life. So his life is flashing before his eyes. He takes the one life, he's seeing Dennis, he's seeing some friends and those shoulda, coulda, wouldas in life if things were different. He talks to Dennis and says, wow, you know, you're doing the music thing. He pitches the music to the local DJs. It's on the radio. It's showing them going to Manhattan. They're living better. They're hanging with girls. They're drinking champagne. They're having this lavish life. And they're artists. And they're just so happy. But it's all a facade. It slows down. That visual goes back to him being on the ground. And it reads game over. How deep was that? If you could have one more up, one more life, but you can't. We cut to family and friends and loved ones. They are all at his funeral. They are dumbfounded. It's pretty quiet. You only hear a few sniffles here and there. And the pastor says, is there anybody that can say a few words? And of course, we have Bobby's mother. She stands up and she says, well, I'll say a few words. I'll say a few things. Because even his own mother couldn't get up and speak. So she gets to the podium and she says, the pain of labor, the pain of going through bringing your child into the world. It's very painful, but it doesn't compare to losing a child. It doesn't compare to that process and knowing that this person can no longer exist. It's a pain that a mother and especially anybody else can even imagine. We've got to stop killing people and it's a shame that he was killed over a material thing. So she and along with a lot of others are under the impression that he was robbed and killed over a necklace. Of course, they don't know that this is the retaliation of him robbing and him taking the jewelry. So she is under the impression and everybody else that this is a cause and effect of ruthless crimes and for no reason at all that this has happened to him. Sha walks in a little closer towards the end of the funeral and he even gives his condolences and flowers towards the front of the church. After that's over, we see somebody by the name of Big G. Wu-Tang fans know who that is and that original name. And Sha says, man, I'm so glad you came. You know, what's up? And he's like, yeah, man, I came all the way from Brooklyn to show some respect. Everybody loved Jason. Bobby sees his cousin which he says hey cousin and he uh, big g at the time he says man you know bobby y'all need to get back to doing this music you and shaw because the tapes that y'all put out last summer so many people were playing them over and over again in brooklyn that the, the tapes were damaged like and people kept asking where can i get another tape and bobby says hey i can make you another tape man that's nothing and big g says no, nah, I don't mean make another tape. I don't mean the old stuff. I mean, when are you going to be for real and start pumping out some new music into the streets? Because clearly, everybody is missing that. As they're speaking, and everybody has already cleared the church, you have Dennis that walks in, and he is so torn up. He looks a little drunk. He's kind of walking slanted up to the front. You could tell he's been crying because as we see in this series, him and Jason were pretty close. They talked every day. They hung out, all of this stuff. So he gets to the front. He even opens the casket, even after they've already closed it, to give him 
a kiss on the forehead and to say his final goodbyes. And the pastor says, hey, I I'm sorry about your loss, but we're trying to move everybody else into this other room so we can eat. And I'm sorry, but there's another funeral that's coming on um, after this. So we really need you to go into the other room. It's okay. You can eat. And even the food is pro provided from Mama Say, and you can have as much as you want. And Dennis has this epiphany, like, you know, Mama Say, like, hold up. And he just takes off running, goes to the room where people are being served with the food. And the man that's serving the food is the main connect, one of the connects that they have that works. One of his restaurants is Mama Say, and, or Mama Say. <laughs> and... He flips over the table and says, you know, how, how dare you even be here when you know you could have stopped your people from killing Jason? And he looks at him like, whoa, you might want to lower your voice. Like, he's like, no, nah, this is messed up. and You can't be here. And he's flipping over stuff. And he's like, F this. And this is some BS. And flipping over stuff. And the guy kind of gets in his ear like, you know, there was nothing I could do about that. Dennis walks off, he's cussing, and everybody's just looking at him like, whoa, what's going on? And he walks up to Bobby, and he walks up to, to, to Big G and says, look, there's nothing I could have done about that. Your boy robbed somebody, and they retaliated. What was I supposed to do? Bobby and everybody else, they're over it because they felt that he could have had some type of influence to stop this. But the guy is saying, look, I, I, there's nothing I could have done or, or anything I could have said. Bobby, Bobby's mother walks over to kind of see what's going on in this little huddle of conversation. And he says, look, I'm sorry about it. She's like, that's okay. Bobby, help me clean this up, you and your sister, so everybody, we can find out and make sure that everybody eats because this is some crazy stuff. Pretty evident that they burned the bridge to one of the supplies because they flipped over all of his food. And you got Bobby, you got Big G, you got the dude with the crazy braids that have yet to say his name, his government name in the series. So I won't say it until they say it in the series because I want this to build up and you learn all the characters as we go. But they have all them, they at the car and they're like, well, since we pretty much done messed up the connect, I guess we need to just, just stop because we're not going to get no, no more supply. And Bobby's just like, yeah, I even applied to a job. So maybe I can get a job there. And then somebody says, you know what? Hey, you know, uh, word around ta town, you know, Chop Call Quest, they just got a deal and they got a 100K advance to cut the next track or to cut the next album. And, you know, dude, like, what? Like, come on now. I can, I can, I used to battle tip long time ago and I was killing them. Like, I, I, could, I could freestyle right now. And he's just like, yeah, we need to do this. Bobby, he gets in his mold and he just takes off because he just wants to get back to that basement because you could tell some stuff is cooking up after they've heard one of their locals and people that they know have been signed. The fire is pretty much lit in them to say, man, you know, they can do it. And if my homeboy used to battle tip, I know we can do this. You got shy and you got power there at his apartment. Because you got to remember, he has an apartment that power gave him. But right in another door, you got people coming in with supply and talking. And he opens that door and he's just looking at everybody. He's just like, man, power, like, it's too many people over here, man. Like, you know, we got to limit how many people are coming over here because it's just too crowded. It's just too much. And I could just hear them as if they standing right here. And Power's just like, yeah, man, I'll see what I could do. And Sha says, yo, man, you know what your man did was messed up. And, you know, they didn't have to do him like that. And Power says, wait a minute. We don't know who did what. So that's pretty slick of you and cautious of you to believe the rumors that are going on in the streets so you better watch your mouth because we can't believe everything that we're hearing in the streets and you can't start taking sides because it seems like you're taking sides oh wait a minute maybe it's this new apartment maybe it's them fluffy pillows you got on that bed that's making you super soft maybe i need to let you go back on that rooftop to be extra hungry like you used to be so you don't get soft, so you don't get mush mush on me. And Shia's just giving him that look and he's just clutching them gold fronts like he just ready just to pop him in the face. But he collects his cool and he lets that slide because this is his livelihood and there's really nothing he can say at this point.
to connect, he wants to go through the streets and see how people are moving the dope throughout the streets. He wants to see if anybody's talking about the shooting, if anybody's kind of conjuring to, to come after them. He's just kind of pacing in the car, seeing what's going on, seeing the sights. He goes from, from Singleton. He goes to Park Hill. He goes to all these different areas to evaluate. And he doesn't notice what he thinks he'll notice. He didn't see a lot of fiends. He didn't see a lot of people supplying drugs. What he saw was a lot of people in the parking lot listening to Eric B. and Rakim. He saw people in the parking lot listening to the latest songs and dancing and having fun and talking. So being the businessman that he is, you can tell that he has an epiphany that, hmm, how can I profit off of this? He goes to the head honcho's house, and you know, we got the guy, the Jamaican. He's in the house, and he's looking at previous tapes he's made with other women having sex, and he's just having a good old time, like, wow, look at the work I done put in, and he's enjoying it, and just looking at the tapes. So he walks in, and he tells the Jamaican, hey, you know, I've been looking in the streets and everything, and um, it seems that people, you know, on the hush-hush are upset about the shooting, and I got an indication from Bobby and everybody else. They done with us. They don't want to re-up. They're done. They're sick and tired of that life. A friend just died. They might not re-up with that. And the Jamaican is just like, you know, they small potatoes, you know, compared to what we pull. And that's nothing. And he's like, well, we could lose money. What you talking about? So the Jamaican says, so if I'm going to lose money, I guess you need to fix that. I guess you need to do something about that, huh? Make the streets remember who I am. Make the streets know that we're not soft, mushy, mushy over here. It's still business. We still baking cakes. We still doing that work on these streets. So if people getting soft and people acting like they don't want to do business with me, I suggest you take care of that. We have Bobby and Divine's mother. She, with a lawyer, goes to jail to see Divine and to tell him, look, I got this lawyer here. And we're working on ways to get you out. The thing is, see, we need you to say that you're addicted to crack. Because if you say you're addicted to crack, this lawyer here can help you get off. And you won't get jail time. You'll just get sentenced to being in rehab. If that's what they come to. If that's what the final judgment is. And the vine's looking at her like... Are you serious? And the mother's just saying, yeah, so I need you to act like you the biggest crackhead ever. And Divine gives her that look, stands up. He literally just walks out like, <laughs> is you crazy? <laughs> yeah, like I want to have that in my file and the streets find out that I, I'm, I'm a seller and I'm smoking crack. Are you serious? It's just showing us how desperate his mother is to get him out. Clearly, he's not down with that. The lawyer has that look like he missed off on some good money, and that was the end of that scene. The supplier calls the Jamaican, and we learn now that the Jamaican's name is Cressy, and he tells him, hey, look, people aren't really doing that in the street, so what I need you to do, I need you to call your boy Eric B. and Rakim, and what we're gonna do is we are gonna put on a talent show. And he gets to working with that. The word spreads like fire. And even <laughs> the dude with the crazy braids, we know who that is. I don't want to say today yet. He goes down to the basement where Bobby is. And he's like, hey, man, you seen this flyer? They talking about it's going to be a concert, man, slash talent show. And they talking about giving $5,000 to the winner. Do you know what I can do with $5,000? That's nothing. I can get up there and kill it. And Bobby's like, whoa, 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 calm down. Cressy is doing this. He's like, man, I don't give up about who, who carrying it on, who giving the show up. It's $5,000, man. We need to do this. So Bobby's looking at the flyer like, hmm, okay. We cut to the scene that it's the day of the talent show slash rap battle. So everybody's signing in. And what I thought that was so unique, you see everybody coming in, you see Dennis, you see Bobby, you see Big G come all the way from Brooklyn to be in this show. And on the signing list, they signed the names, the rap names that they had given to themselves before they were 
the artists that we know to this day. Now, I got to read this because I'm not going to remember all of it right now. But we we got Big G who signed in as Ally Justice. We got Russell. So now we know the name because he somebody calls him Russell. Russell has a name of the one-man army. You got Clifford, who is Shotgun. Dennis signs as D-Lover. And Bobby signs as Dynamite. <laughs> More and more people are starting to sign in. People are getting nervous. They got music playing. You got Sha and you got uh, all of the other big time slingers in a VIP way at the top watching everybody about to get on stage. While everybody is about to go on stage and prepare for this pivot turn in their life of performing, we cut back to jail where we see Divine in jail and they're in an area where everybody sits in jail and a man comes in and he's like, look, this room right here it belongs to Brooklyn. None of y'all Singleton, none of y'all Park Hill. This is this none of y'all Staten Island people can come up here. This all Brooklyn. This Brooklyn, that phone is Brooklyn, that table is Brooklyn, everything in here is Brooklyn. If you want to use anything in Brooklyn, you gotta come through us. You gotta come through me. And of course, we got Devon sitting on the table like oh, can I just do my time and go home? Like, he just sitting there like, oh, it's about to be some mess. So you got one guy that says, oh, this phone is only for Brooklyn? Oh, I didn't know that. And he reaches for the phone like he going to pick it up. He like, oh, I'll call my girl tomorrow. So clearly he's going to test this brother to let him know, you say it's Brooklyn, but I don't think so. Everybody going on stage, you got people going on stage, you got Dennis, you got all these people that's getting up there doing their thing and everybody having a good time. Then you come back to the jail scene where we have some people from Staten Island walk in and they ain't trying to hear it. They want to test this brother and they bother and they pick up the phone and they sit down and then a fight breaks out. You see Divine, he's in there fighting and then all of a sudden somebody with a shank starts Stabbing Divine all in his stomach and he's getting stabbed up and it's cutting back to the talent show and people are having fun and rapping then it's going back to the brawl in jail of people getting stabbed and cut the police finally come in and break up the fight and as they retain everybody they hold back divine and we see that he has phone books all across his stomach so clearly he's thought about let me be ready just in case some stuff pop off so he's fine just bumped and bruised and knocked upside the head a few times but he's not dead he good get back to the talent show everybody has performed except for Bobby he's getting heated and hot behind stage like dang like everybody done went but me like I can't believe that so then all of a sudden the dude looks at the list and he's like oh we got one more person uh who is this oh up next Bobby Dynamite he backstage like what you said Bobby Dynamite that ain't my name I put dynamite on her so he's like ah, whatever so he's about to go on stage and the dude's like, oh, oh, wait, 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 never mind, I'm sorry. Not that person, we got somebody else. So somebody else come on stage, clearly somebody who had the hookup to go ahead and perform. And they get up there and it's two of them or three of them and they rocking the stage and everybody having a good time. Meanwhile, Bobby, he backstage like, for real, they just gonna skip me? Okay, so the crowd is getting hyped and Bobby is looking more and more discouraged like dang they getting the house just amped up and I'm supposed to go on after this and I barely know what I'm doing. They perform. Then he says his name wrong again. Oh, it's Bobby and he's dynamite. He's like, oh, whatever, man. So he just get on the stage. He has the DJ to tape clearly with his own stuff. And as a viewer, I'm like, okay, he about to kill it. <laughs> The DJ starts to play the tape, and the tape just, just, it's messed up. All of the stuff on the inside, he pulls it out like, oh, your tape broke. So Bobby like, dang, okay. So he starts to tell the, the, the audience, okay, everybody clap. Everybody clap, and everybody like, okay. And he proceeds to say this verse that is so far gone that the audience is just like, what the hell he talking about? He talking about how his destined and the mother got the egg and the dad had the sperm and he fought off millions of other sperm and he's the winner. And he's the one that fertilized the egg. 
and everybody like it was deep but the audience wasn't feeling it it was just off the flow was terrible and the audience was just like uh oh. gladly they didn't boo him it was just kind of like that okay we having a good time bro just get off the stage so he gets off the stage while divine is in solitary confinement the dude in the cell next to him says hey man that fight broke out you know i'm 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 not from your hood, but you helped me. Like, why did you help me? He was like, look, Staten Island is the smallest borough. You know, you might be from this hood, whatever, but we got to stick together because there's too many of them Brooklyn brothers up in there. So I just wanted to help. And he's like, you know, that's good, but this food they're giving me, I'm not eating that. They're treating me like a dang old animal. Divine's like, look, you need your energy because we don't know what else is going to happen up in here. We don't need you passing out because you're hungry. So eat your food. We're going to stick together. Styling is right now it's Staten Island against everybody else. Bobby is with everybody else. Clearly, they done lost the competition because they looking real defeated. They in the back. The show's over with. People done left. And Bobby was just like, man, all y'all verses killed it. And <laughs> you got shotgun. You know, you got Clifford that says, yours was okay. <laughs> Pretty much letting it alone. Like, we did okay. We did good. But I don't know what the hell that was. You just did. So Bobby's like, whatever. He was like, look, none of us won. So... Think about what you're saying. We both sitting here, we're all losers at this point. So pump your brakes, calm down. So they share a little laugh, but Bobby says, you know, the people that won, they were up there like a group, you know, and they were all together with some fire lyrics and verses all at one time. So while they spitting fire, it's all of them getting noticed because they collectively together. And maybe it was harder for them to judge the rap battle because everything was so separate and they had to pick somebody and that somebody went to who could hype up the crowd the best and they had the most people so maybe we should do something together and not separate because we all hot you know so they consider that and like all right man so everybody starts to disperse and leave and then you got shot at meets up with bobby and he says man y'all did really good out there man but that verse you kicked you know, maybe that was just a little too out there and too far gone and, and people couldn't be on your level. And Bobby was like, well, yeah, whatever. But out of everything, Sha, you should have been on that stage. You should have been spitting the, the, the what you've been spitting in the basement because I know you got it. And Sha says, yeah, man, you think so? I, I should have got up there. And he's like, yeah, you should have got up there. And he was just like, well, next time I, but he's cut, cut off by a beeper beeping. So... We see that the writing has allowed us to say that Shy really wants to do it, but he's consumed by the dope gang. He cannot break free and be himself. He doesn't doesn't know how to break free from this. So he kind of says, well, I guess we'll never know. And he just walks off like, I want to do that, but this dope gang got me. That was the end of episode three. Um, once again, they sped this episode up a little bit needed a little bit more dialogue it felt a little rushed but hey you know we got 10 episodes and they got a lot to go over and we're in episode three so yes they do need to speed it up and yes they need to add more music because it's episode three and i just didn't heard a few beats here and there but they had to do that because they wanted us to see the growth of all the characters i still like that they're giving us the government names in increments and we're having to learn everybody bit by bit because when we finally know how they come up with their names and how uh, 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 people start to call them by their artist names we can know who's who on a different level and we've grown emotionally to these characters and we can have a connection therefore making us appreciate the music when it finally gets there because Bobby is just now getting to the point to where he knows even how to work the SB 1200 barely we just getting to where somebody has a taste of their dream, which was that rap battle slash talent show. And let me tell you something. Once you get a taste of your dream, compared to everything else, you feel it. And you start to say, man, I need to dedicate more time into this dream because it made me feel like this. So it's allowing us to see that they were so happy. 
They weren't thinking of their circumstances. They weren't thinking about the dope game. They weren't thinking about the tough times on the streets. They had that moment that night of just having fun and the night flew by because they were having so much fun. So I guarantee you in this next episode that will premiere this Wednesday that that will light the fire under them like really, really quickly and saying, man, we put that together. It was a deadline. It was kind of like just out and just spontaneous that there was a show. And look how quickly we thought of something and put some music together and did something together. So I think that's what we're going to see in this next episode. Let me know what you think. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss any posts. Follow me on Instagram. Same profile name. Official bun underscore E. Bye.